Sitting on my wrist is Apple's newest blockbuster, the Apple Watch. Wall Street's latest predictions are that Apple could sell close to 36 million of these smartwatches over the next 12 months, with close to 3 million being sold in the first two months alone. But if you're like me, you may be wondering, what's the big deal? Am I missing something? A Business Insider poll suggests that 51% of people agree they just don't see the point. So you're not alone. Personally, I think Steve Jobs would be saying the same thing. After all, he was at Apple's helm when they released the iPod in 2001, changing the way we listen to music. In 2007, when the iPhone was released, ushering in the smartphone revolution, and in 2010, when the iPad was released, changing the way we work. But now in 2015, with the release of the Apple Watch, skeptics are left scratching their heads and wondering if Apple's winning streak has finally come to an end. You won't be surprised to hear that the media soundbite jockeys are falling all over themselves to see who can be more sarcastic and skeptical about it, because we've heard that before, haven't we? When the iPod was released, you could read headlines that said things like, Apple, rest in peace, Apple is losing its appeal, and Apple scraping the bottom of the barrel. When the iPhone debuted, they said Apple's corporate slogan is think different, the problem is Apple always thinks the same. Or it's unclear what Steve Jobs can do to turn around fortunes, fortunes. And the iPhone is nothing more than a luxury bobble that will appeal to a few gadget freaks. And when the iPad came out, the headline sounded like this. Apple is a short-term winner and a long-term loser. And Apple's latest creation seems destined to flop. Analysts even predicted that the iPad's first year sales would be 1.2 million units, but hey, that guess was only 14.6 million units short. So now with the release of the Apple Watch, skeptics are at it again, saying the watch is a fad and sure to fade away the moment the novelty wears off. Well, what if I were to tell you that the watch Apple released this past April was not the design Steve Jobs imagined? In fact, one month before he passed away, he filed for a patent on the watch design he really wanted Apple to create, a document that I found hiding in plain sight at the United States Patent Office. Keep watching, and in about 90 seconds, I'll reveal how this document gives savvy investors a glimpse into Apple Watch's future. And I'll be breaking apart the prototype for this watch later in this video, cutting it open to reveal the small, tiny component that all investors will want to add to their portfolio today. Because we believe it's the key to the next mega hit Apple's best scientists are likely frantically trying to perfect in the company's famously secretive labs a product Apple believes is the true rightful successor to the iPhone. And if you look closely enough, you'll realize there may actually be two ways to potentially grab your share of the mountain of cash that Apple stands to make on the next generation Apple Watch and why Apple CEO Tim Cook would want to keep it hidden in plain sight. The first way is by investing in Apple directly and claiming your share of its dividends and capital gains in the years to come. So I want to tell you about the second way. According to one of America's top-rated growth stock experts, it could be a much better way and much faster strategy for adding to your wealth today than a direct investment in Apple would be. And the history of the computing industry suggests that he's correct. Just think back to the spring of 1977. Computers were rapidly becoming smaller. A machine that once barely squeezed into a warehouse could now fit onto a desk. And the undisputed king of the mountain was IBM. But your best investment at the time was a company that didn't even sell computers. You know this company as Intel. And of course, you also know that Intel supplied one tiny little component for computers, a component so sophisticated and so essential to manufacturers like IBM, along with Compaq, Packard, Dell, and many others, that every $5,000 invested in Intel stock back then has grown into almost a million dollars today. Now, there's no doubt who today's computer king is. Apple has taken computers off our desks and off our laps and put them in the palm of our hand and now on our wrists. Just like IBM, Apple has put itself in a position to dominate the computer industry for decades. Would you bet against them? I wouldn't, but I do have a better way of betting for them. 
You see there's just one tiny little detail left to work out before Apple's watch can become the next big thing and meet those crazy Wall Street predictions. And that's where you come in. Because here's the question for investors like us today. What is the future of the Apple Watch? It's actually the same question Apple CEO Tim Cook is asking himself right now, too. Because when it comes to obtaining the crucial component his company needs to turn today's Apple Watch into tomorrow's next big game changer, he's in quite a pickle. Like I said, I'll explain why in just a minute. But as you'll see, it's bigger than just the Apple Watch. And you're looking at it right now in this patent document. But the real story here is what's happening on the inside. Just like Intel at the dawn of the computer age, the tiny device we're talking about today is buried inside and holds the potential for big profits. Keep watching and I'll reveal how this relates to the newest stage in the history of computing and your best opportunity to start investing in it today. It's a small world after all where dreams can come true. Stick with me and you'll discover how one of the most magical places on earth could be your ticket to big profits in the coming months and years, giving you the financial freedom to live out your dreams. After all, we're smack in the middle of one of the greatest bull markets in American history. It shouldn't be so hard to grab your share and make some good money. Which is why, while everyone is clamoring to buy shares of Apple, hoping to ride the wave of Apple's next big hit, one small growth investing club started pursuing a very different and potentially much less stressful way to profit off of Apple's next release that goes beyond just buying Apple stock. Banking winners that have gone up, 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 and sometimes way up month after month. And even though their stocks don't always win, they're quite satisfied with an average return that's nearly doubled the S&P 500 for more than nine years. So if you want to know how they're doing it, if you want to find out why the growth investing expert I told you about is celebrating not only a 100 times return on one of his more famous investments, but also a number one track record ranking in the Wall Street Journal, then you need to take a quick trip with me across the street to find out where that mountain of cash may be and how I found Steve Jobs' real vision for the Apple Watch. Now most people don't know this, but the Motley Fool's headquarters is located directly down the street from the U.S. Patent Office, where every technology company that wants to obtain intellectual property protection for its newest inventions is required to file stacks and stacks of specialized paperwork. And believe it or not, any American citizen can actually walk right into the Patent Office and demand to see that paperwork. You just write your request on an index card and a friendly federal worker will pull the file. Of course, hardly anyone actually does this, but you'd be pretty amazed with what you can see if you do. I know I was. For a growth-minded investor, an afternoon at the patent office is the next best thing to an afternoon at Fort Knox. Or then again, maybe it's better. If you bring a few quarters for the photocopier, you get to take home all the gold. You see, I got a little curious, and yes, maybe a little greedy because I've been hearing some really wild rumors from my contacts in the technology world over the past few weeks, and here's what they all boil down to. Apple has pulled together a team of more than 100 of its best engineers and product designers to work on the future of the Apple Watch. Apple is even hiding away this project team in a top secret facility off-site from its headquarters in Cupertino, California which means that even Apple's 50,000 plus other employees are hearing this story in whispers too. For a tech savvy investor, these rumors and whispers can be really exciting. After all, an Apple product release can be a windfall for investors who know where to invest their money. And right now we think the even smarter money says that there's a way for us to win here, regardless of whether Tim Cook is truly ready to fill the shoes of his mentor, Steve Jobs. How? By imagining what the future of the Apple Watch could be and then investing in the supplier that Apple and its competitors might eventually need to do business with if they want to fully capitalize on this post-smartphone market opportunity. So when I made the trip across the street to the patent office, I realized right away that I was on to something big. But I also realized that if I wanted to cash in on this coming mega trend in the technology industry, I needed a plan and I needed it fast. Why? Take another look at the patent document I've been telling you about, but try to resist the urge to go straight to your brokerage website and buy stock in Apple, 
because if you give me another minute to explain what this patent document could really mean for your investment portfolio, I believe it will be worth the wait. What I am sure you noticed right away is this image looks nothing like the Apple Watch being sold today. In fact, it doesn't really look like a watch at all. There is no face to tell the time or any sign of a screen anywhere. Instead, it looks more like a wristband than any watch I've ever seen. But this is nothing new to Apple. They change the way their products look every six to eight months. Remember those old pictures I showed you earlier? Remember the original iPod released in 2001? It was a clunky device by today's standards and looked like this. Sure, it gave you a thousand songs in your pocket, but over the course of the next nine years, iPods began shrinking and changing shapes. The first iPhone released in 2007 looks nothing like the iPhone of today. They become thinner, lighter weight, and have larger screens and don't come in just one or two colors, but a wide range of choices. At this point, I'm sure you're two steps ahead of me in thinking, but I didn't upgrade my iPhone 4 or 5S only for looks. I wanted the new functionality, access to new apps, and the ability to do more with my phone. And you'd be absolutely correct. And I'm sure most people feel the same way. And that's why we always hear those skeptical arguments around an Apple product release. But as an investor, we know that the long view strategy goes much deeper. If the look or shape of a new Apple product were the only difference, then I bet they'd sell a hell of a lot less and quite frankly, they would not be the company they are today. The real reason most people buy new Apple products or any phone or device is that it does more of what they want. In some way, it makes their lives easier and less complicated. After all, who doesn't want their life to be less complicated, simpler, and well, less stressful? We're all human after all, and the best inventions and innovations were born out of a dream to make life better. At least the innovations that made the really big money and lined the pockets of forward-thinking investors with piles of cash. Which is why, as smart investors looking to make big profits and add some extra zeros to the end of our portfolios, we need to think bigger than the Apple Watch. After all, the market for smartwatches is a bustling one with a wide array of options, including the Samsung Gear S and Android-based models, including the LG G Watch R and the Motorola Moto 360, all of which are in a high-stakes game to earn your hard-earned dollars by inventing new ways to make your life easier. A leading market intelligence firm called ABI Research recently forecasted that by 2018, major technology companies like the ones I listed will be selling 485 million of these new devices per year. But only if companies like Apple, Samsung, Sony, Google, and Microsoft can overcome some of the barriers that they face with these devices today, including small screen size, clunky style, limited battery life, and they must become standalone computing devices with a more robust functionality. And more robust functionality is the key here. In order for consumers to truly embrace any smartwatch, they need to see how they will benefit from owning one. In short, what can a smartwatch do for me? So the big question now is not what the new Apple Watch or any of its competitors will look like, but what they will be able to do and how they will be able to make our lives easier. America's top-rated growth investor has seen this patent document and created a strategy that he sees as a much better and faster way to profit off the next evolution of the smartwatch. But truth be told, he didn't create this strategy just from this schematic. He saw something much more impressive that may hold the key to the future of the Apple Watch and its competitors. Because while you've been staring at the Apple Watch on my left wrist, up my sleeve on my right wrist, I'm wearing a working prototype of what the future could hold for the smartwatch. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to break it apart to see what makes it work and how investors like us could profit from what's inside. This prototype, or more specifically, the technology and functionality of this prototype, could hold the key to Apple's next big release or the next big release from Google, Samsung, or any other smartwatch or device manufacturer. And in just a few minutes, I'll reveal it to you, along with how you can position yourself to profit from it. Steve Jobs believed in this technology so much that he actually owned more shares of the company that utilizes it than he did Apple shares. 
over 130 million shares, or 7.69% of the company to be exact. So with 485 million reasons to find out what the next Apple Watch will be able to do, I must admit when I got back from the patent office that day, I was excited. But I was also a little confused. On the one hand, I was 100% certain that the document I'd seen represented the next stage of the smartwatch revolution. In fact, I've never been so certain of anything in my life. On the other hand, there were a few little details that started nagging at me. Why didn't Apple just release the future Apple Watch back in April? With all the hype surrounding the watch's release, wouldn't they want it to do everything Steve Jobs hoped it would? What will the next generation of smartwatches be able to do that the current watches can't? I needed answers, and fortunately, I knew just where to get them. Because for the last nine years, I've been lucky to work alongside the top-rated growth investment team in the world at The Motley Fool. And once I started chewing the fat with those guys, I quickly discovered that I could have saved myself that trip across the street. In fact, this makes me feel less like a fool and more like a plain old dummy. The answer was right there, staring me in the face all along. It was on my wrist, because I'm already wearing a working prototype for the next evolution of the Apple Watch. And as I'll show you in just a minute, I believe it's the key to understanding what's really up Tim Cook's sleeve and the stock we recommend you should be buying today. So believe me, I was happy to learn where I'd gone wrong. Just like I've been happy to learn so many other lessons about investing from David Gardner and his team over the past decade. And what a decade it's been. I've seen The Motley Fool grow from a little investing website that could into a financial powerhouse that includes a widely syndicated newspaper column, a popular radio show, and a series of best-selling books. I've also seen David Gardner and his band of investing fools pop up everywhere from CNBC to Larry King Live to Dr. Phil. I've seen The Economist call us an ethical oasis and Time Magazine reveal that even billionaires get their ideals from The Motley Fool. Heck, I've even seen them toss on their jester caps and then ring the opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange. And most recently, I've seen David Gardner and his team praised by the financial industry watchdog Mark Hulbert in the Wall Street Journal, sitting number one in Mark Hulbert's rankings of every investing service out there. But most important of all, I've seen The Motley Fool become the greatest investing community on earth, a place they can learn from professional investors who never talk down to them and never treat them like their questions aren't important. And a place that shows us how to make money the right way by keeping things simple and investing in quality businesses for the long term rather than nervously flipping trades to a new ticker symbol 24-7. Because the way I look at it, time is even more precious than money and if you invest in a stock like the one David's recommending to us today in the kind of favorable market environment we're experiencing right now, well, you could soon have a lot more of both. So I shouldn't have been surprised that David Gardner already knew about the next generation of what he calls wearables is going to be. After all, David Gardner is the rule-breaking technology investor who first became famous for revealing, in public, right on our little Motley Fool website on August 5, 1994, that he was putting money into an innovative new company called AOL for just 44 cents a share. In the years that followed, that split-adjusted position climbed all the way up to $89.18 per share, and that's a staggering increase of more than 20,000 percent. But David doesn't like to rest on his laurels, which is why he actually sold a portion of that skyrocketing AOL position to fund his stake in another upstart called Amazon.com back in 1997. We just had a little party at the office to celebrate that investment going up more than 100 times from a split-adjusted $3.24 all the way up to $300 and beyond. And then, even as the dot-com recession was in full swing, David sold a portion of his Amazon.com position to fund his investment in eBay in 2001. I doubt I need to tell you that stock also quadrupled within four years or that he didn't stop with eBay. And that's why I say, show me another investor anywhere who has more experience in leading little guys like you and me to huge gains on technology stocks. To have that kind of success over such a sustained period, you need to see the world a little differently, and David Gardner does. And here's what he sees now. 
The next evolution of the smartwatch is not taking place at Apple headquarters, but is actually happening a long drive down I-5 in Anaheim, which should be of no surprise once you learn that it's nestled in a facility started by a great Imagineer who enticed visitors by promising, you will find yourself in the land of yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy, where nothing of the present exists. It's here in 2008 that an adventure began to discover a way to reduce the stress and hassles people felt when visiting THE amusement park in a nondescript lab nestled next to the Toy Story Midway Mania ride. By now I'm sure you've guessed that I'm talking about Disneyland and its founder, Walt Disney. You see, Walt was a dreamer who wanted people to not only see the future, but experience it, which is why he started Epcot the experimental prototype community of tomorrow to immerse people in the world of tomorrow. And this is where we find the key for investors like us to profit from the possible 485 million smartwatch sales. Imagine what an investment in that type of potential could mean for you and your family. So what is this magical prototype? Well, if you've taken your family or grandkids to Disney lately, you may have purchased one of these. It's called the Magic Band, and I'm certain it would make Walt Disney proud because it truly may tell us about the world of tomorrow and what Apple and its competitors are hard at work trying to create. The Magic Band is a wristband of sorts that has the capability to create a personalized experience when you visit one of the Disney theme parks. It looks like a simple rubber wristband or a long watch band with no face. So what can a Magic Band do? Well, imagine ordering food from your favorite Disney restaurant before you leave your hotel room. You walk into the restaurant, sit down anywhere, and magically a server delivers your exact order to your table because Disney knows who you are, where you're sitting, and what you ordered. Or never having to wait in line, effortlessly riding all the rides you wanted with the least amount of walking from one ride to another. It even makes your travel easier. Once your flight arrives at Orlando, you can board a park-bound shuttle and your luggage will just arrive at your room in your hotel. In the park, there are no tickets or turnstiles for that matter. The Magic Band is your ticket and with the wave of your wrist, you can ride any ride you want. No need to carry money. Everything is charged through the credit card linked to your Magic Band. No need to carry hotel keys. Your Magic Band is all you need. Even photos taken in the park will show up instantly on your cell phone. What is so remarkable about the Magic Band is that it's not remarkable looking at all, yet it connects you to a vast and powerful system of sensors within the park that makes your experience, well, magical. As if the park knows what you want before you even want it. The whole experience becomes invisible to the guest whose only job is to have fun and enjoy time in the park with their family. And that ability to remove the hassles of carrying your wallet around the park or carrying a photo ID or a hotel key or park tickets is what makes the technology behind the Magic Band so remarkable. Steve Jobs saw the magic of Disney and bought over 130 million shares of Disney stock. But what I wanted to talk to you about today is not to run out and buy Disney stock or Apple stock for that matter. Sure, I doubt you can go wrong with either company. They're both great stocks to own. What I wanted to talk to you about today is the technology that makes the Magic Band possible and how you as an investor can position yourself to profit from the primary company that makes it a reality and the true vision of an Apple Watch of the future, the one which I believe Steve Jobs intended. This type of technology is like riding a roller coaster that never comes down and offers the potential for profits that dreams are made from. You see, Disney is just the testing ground for the technologies that could soon create the ultimate in a personalized world. Imagine the power of the Magic Band technology embedded in an Apple Watch where your personal preferences open up a world of conveniences like starting your car with just a wave of your wrist or opening your front door with a wave of your hand, or walking into your house and the thermostat automatically adjusts to the temperature of your exact liking. It would seem, well, magical. If you think about the major ways Apple has transformed our lives, you'll notice it doesn't invent new devices or technologies. Instead, it takes an existing idea, waits until it's absolutely certain the world is going mad for it, and then 
perfects it. Blackberries, palms, and other smartphones were common long before the first iPhone. Tablets existed well before Steve Jobs introduced the first iPad in 2010. And I'm sure you can probably remember being impressed by those early MP3 players with a whopping 12 song capacity before the iPod came along and put a thousand songs in your pocket. So Apple can be your very own investing crystal ball. Look closely and I think it will tell you with an excellent track record what the next big trend will be and then lead you straight to the investment that could build you a fortune off of it. Which is why if you're looking to add a few zeros to your portfolio, your blood should be pumping pretty fast right now. Think about it. Why was Steve Jobs so interested in the technology experiments going on at Disney? Why did he buy up over 130 million shares? Well, I decided to find out by cutting one of these magic bands open to see what secret potion or pixie dust could be found inside. The way I see it, I owed it to myself and every other investor looking to profit from the smartwatch and the wearables revolution. What I discovered was nothing short of amazing. As you can see from this video I shot of my destructive curiosity, once you successfully get the magic band open, which is no easy task and took me quite a while to pry open, you can see a number of antennas, this RFID chip, and a number of radio-like sensors that can send and receive information from various distances called touchless near-field communications, or touchless NFC for short. Again, nothing remarkable by any means, rather simple really, but if we dig a little deeper, things really start to get interesting for investors like us. Why? Because remember, it's not about what the Apple Watch or Android models look like, it's what they enable us as users to do. The magic is in the functionality. For the Magic Band, the magic is that it enables visitors to the Disney theme parks to forget about the hassles of visiting a theme park. No room keys, no tickets, no wallet, and no lines. You are connected to the park through thousands of sensors that are constantly sending and receiving information to and from your Magic Band. Like your location in the park, what you ordered for lunch, what ride you're interested in riding, and what hotel room you're staying in. An experience is created that's all about you without all the hassles. And every visitor that goes to the park is going to have a different experience based on what they want out of that visit. How? Because when you booked your vacation, you entered in your likes, dislikes, the rides you want to go on, your payment information, your flight information, and what's most important to you on your vacation. But this type of interaction with the world around us is not unique to Disneyland. Every day we interact with our cell phones or GPS or computer in much the same way. When we're looking to travel somewhere we've never been before, we enter our start location into a GPS and tell it where we want to go. On our cell phones, we log on to Google Maps to find the nearest train station or restaurant that serves our favorite food. On our computers, we go to weather.com and type in our location to find out what clothes we should be wearing or if it's going to be a nice day for a barbecue. And when we go to the food store, we wave our smartwatch clad wrist or use our cell phones to pay for our groceries because we saved our credit card information to our device. The issue is not that technology isn't out there to personalize our worlds, it's that these functionalities exist on a multitude of devices that must either work together or make our lives a hassle having to bounce between one device or another to get the answers we need. The true winner in this post-smartphone market is going to be the company who's first to market with a smartwatch or wearable that makes these tasks seamless, effortless, and personal, where every day is like being in Disneyland where the world is personalized. Now, as I'm sure you've already guessed, the only way that this is possible is if all of our devices are connected, including our smartwatches and wearables, where through the interconnectedness of these devices, our lives become easier, effortless, and our devices become invisible. And why Apple, Google, Samsung, Sony, Microsoft, and our old friends at Intel are all slamming on the accelerator pedal and shoveling billions of dollars into research and development to make the dream of a personalized world possible. Now, why all the fuss? 
Well, I firmly believe in ABI's forecast that by 2018, major technology companies will be selling 485 million of these new devices per year. So if you're Apple, Google, Samsung, Sony, or Microsoft, you have 485 million reasons to be first to market with this technology. And Avi Greengart, a technology product expert for another top research firm, Current Analysis Inc., says we're now standing at the tipping point of this historic market shift. Because, make no mistake, this isn't just some Silicon Valley pipe dream and it isn't a fairy tale. This is a high stakes race to create the personalized wearable of the future. Now, I can't say for certain how long Apple will be the king of computing, and I can't say for certain all the things that the next Apple Watch and its competitors will be able to do. Fortunately, I don't have to because there's three things that I can say for certain. And not because that's what my growth investing hero David Gardner and his full research team have concluded, but because I'm wearing this gadget on my wrist right now and have experienced firsthand the potential of its functionality. One, all wearable computers will have location sensing as their core feature. So whether you're in a board meeting, an airport, or a swimming pool, they'll know exactly where you are and what you're trying to accomplish there. And why they'll eventually replace our TV remote controls, hotel keys, parking meters, ID cards, passwords, tickets, you name it, literally putting everything in the world at our fingertips faster than you can wave your hand and say open sesame. Two, the only way that smartwatches or wearables are going to overcome a consumer skepticism is through their functionality. And number three, all wearable devices or smartwatches will need to connect with all other devices seamlessly. But there's a little hiccup in the magic right now. Remember the pickle I told you Tim Cook is in right now? Well, he needs to get his hands on the tiny devices that make the magic band magic. So does Google, Samsung, Nokia, or any other wearables or smartwatch manufacturers. They will all need to incorporate this functionality for their devices to connect to the larger world. Can you guess what manufacturer makes that technology? Well, David Gardner has already made his guess, and I bet he's right. After all, he's been breaking the rules of Wall Street for years. I explained before that David Gardner was one of the first investors to catch on to companies like AOL, Amazon.com, eBay, Starbucks, and Chipotle, not to mention a lot of other extremely profitable stocks I'll show you in a minute that you haven't read about in the news yet. And remember those rumors and whispers I've been hearing about from my contacts in the technology world? Well, they suggest he is right. And when I broke open the magic band, I was happily amazed to learn he's not only right, but right on the money. You see, Apple is aiming to include even greater flexibility in the Apple Watch 2, possibly including what industry insiders are calling tetherless operation, developing capabilities into the Apple Watch so that it no longer needs to rely on your iPhone. In short, untethering your Apple Watch from your iPhone. Google announced recently that they are also working on the same type of technology which will free us from our smartphones, saying that it's significant considering this has been such a shortcoming for smartwatches in the past. And recent evidence reveals that Apple and Google are already working with one specific company to make that happen, the same company that David is on record recommending nearly four years ago, and yes, is in the magic band. And boy, has he been right. Investors who listened to David when he first said, buy this stock, have more than tripled their money. How? Because this company is already the supplier of the technology that supplies Apple, Google, Nokia, NTC, Samsung, and other manufacturers with their NFC technology. The technology which makes Google Wallet and Apple Pay work. But what's more exciting is David believes this company is still a very compelling buy for investors today because of the explosion that Apple's watch just ignited. I can't say I'm surprised. After all, he's been breaking the rules of Wall Street for years. In the nine years since David started offering monthly growth stock recommendations to ordinary investors like you and me, he's nearly doubled the return of the S&P 500 leading Holbert Financial Digest to rank Rule Breakers as the number one growth investing newsletter in the world. Here's how David describes his investing philosophy. 
The one thing we all have in common is a dedication to identifying, understanding, and growing wealthy together, investing in these companies, industries, and technologies that are changing the world. So how about we get down to business and discuss the best way to get this stock now? Thanks for watching today. I hope the information I've provided so far has been helpful to you. And sorry for being so long-winded, but the truth is the circumstances behind this history-making investment opportunity are fairly complex, which works to your advantage. While many analysts are drooling over the cash Apple is raking in on these new products, they are missing the real story, which is the chance for investors to potentially profit even more by buying shares of this company that's less than one-thirtieth the size of Apple. That's why I want to hurry up at this point and show you a special opportunity that The Motley Fool has never extended to anyone before. This offer allows you to request your very own copy of our new Investor Action Guide, One Stock for the Personalized Computing Era. It even reveals why we think this company is so well positioned that it doesn't even need Apple's business in order to be wildly successful. You deserve to get the full story about this company so you can decide for yourself whether it's the right time to take advantage of the historic investing opportunity that David has identified. This guide is officially valued at $29, but I want to send you a copy today with my compliments entirely free. All I ask in return is that you listen to one more offer that could prove extremely valuable to you over the coming months and years. It's my personal invitation to sample everything our Motley Fool Rule Breakers community has to offer with no risk to your membership fee or obligation whatsoever. That's right, I want to give you the chance to profit not only from David's number one early bird pick for the dawn of the personalized computing revolution, but also from every other recommendation that he's ever made. And I want you to discover for yourself everything that Rule Breakers has to offer without having to risk even one dollar of your membership fee. You see, at Motley Fool Rule Breakers, we stand behind every piece of advice, insight, and recommendation we make with 100% confidence. So you can decide for yourself whether it's the right time to take advantage of the historic investing opportunity that David has identified. Your complete satisfaction is guaranteed or your membership fee back. So we want you to go ahead and take a full 30 days to have a good look at every breakout company we've uncovered. And then if for any reason you're not totally thrilled, just tell us to send your membership fee back. Up to the last day of your first month, we'll promptly refund every penny, no questions asked. But I'm pretty sure that once you get a closer look at what our number one rated investment team is up to, you'll want to stick around and get all the upcoming Rule Breakers recommendations. Baidu, Catamaran, Chipotle, Intuitive Surgical, IPG Photonics, Mercado Libre, NetEase.com, Rackspace Hosting, Salesforce.com, Vertex Pharmaceuticals. Believe me, the full list of Rule Breakers winners is even longer. But I've already kept you long enough, and I know that you need time to think about this investment for yourself instead of just basing your decision on what I've been able to tell you here. That's why I hope you'll take me up on my offer to get the full story on the wearable computing stock we've discussed in this report directly from David Gardner. So remember, when you accept my personal invitation and agree to sample everything Motley Fool Rule Breakers has to offer without risk to your membership fee or obligation today, I'll send you your exclusive copy of our One Stock for the Personalized Computing Era Action Guide absolutely free. Normally, you can gain access to every top recommendation on the Motley Fool Rule Breaker Scorecard, plus get all our updates and reports, plus access to the members-only website that archives everything covered by Rule Breakers for the regular membership rate of $299 per year. Given the kinds of returns I've showed you today, I'm sure you'll agree that's a bargain in itself. But because David wants to make absolutely sure you don't miss out on your unique chance to profit from this historical advance in computer technology, he's given me the green light to offer you an even better deal, one that allows you to sample everything I've told you about today for 30 full days and then lock in our absolute lowest price for two full years of the service. At just $129 for two years of rule breakers, $350 off the regular membership rate. 
Of course, if you'd rather not take advantage of our absolute best offer, you're still welcome to join Rule Breakers for one year at a bargain price. And if you join us right now, we'll also send you two of the most popular guides we've ever put together here at The Motley Fool absolutely free. The first one is called Three Rule Breakers in One, How to Invest in the Company That's Winning the Global Talent War. And here's the story. The Chief Digital Officer of The Motley Fool is feeling confident about one cutting-edge web company. In fact, he's feeling so confident that he's putting $117,000 of his own money on the table. And he was up 19% after just 48 hours. This guide will tell you everything you need to know to invest right alongside him and get a piece of this one little stock that has three ways to win in 2015 and beyond. The second guide is called The Death of Brick and Mortars, One Company to Bank Your Profits. It reveals the upstart company following in the footsteps of rule breakers like Amazon.com and Netflix and giving big brothers like Bank of America a big headache because once a business goes online, there's no going back. Just ask Borders Books and Blockbuster Video. No wonder this stock has already doubled in the past year alone. Our guide makes investors like you the most dangerous rule breakers in the banking industry since Bonnie and Clyde. Plus, as a thank you for watching my investing video today, I'll even throw in one more fast action bonus gift. It's an exclusive research report called Three Hot Stocks to Buy in 2016. This is the highly sought after annual report that has handed investors incredible returns year after year, a $29 value. But if you take me up on my invitation to join Motley Fool Rule Breakers today, I'll throw it in at no additional charge. So don't delay, you can only claim your free copy of this premium research guide when you act now. Add it up and your free guides and discounts are worth more than $400. In other words, you have everything to gain and not even one penny of your membership fee to lose. And we call this our membership fee guarantee. Remember, we think it's never a good idea to bet against Apple, but there is a better way for betting for them, banking huge profits for the next phase of the wearables revolution. But we believe your best move right now to create Intel-like returns and join our boss David Gardner in the 10,000% Profit Club is buying stock in this forward-thinking supply lab today. That's why I urge you to get our brand new report right now. And if that's not enough reasons to hurry, here's one more. This Rule Breakers Mega Bundle offer could be pulled off the table as soon as tomorrow. There's really no way to be sure because it all depends on how many investors respond today and join the paying members who are adding to their holdings in this perfectly positioned stock as we speak. Because even though we'd like to welcome as many new members today as possible, it's only fair that we put their needs first. So I can only guarantee everything I've offered you today if you join us right now through this offer. Please don't risk missing out. Just click the Start Now button below to join us and begin positioning yourself for a lifetime of wealth for yourself and your family today.